Sage Wanderer here, and welcome to episode 5 of Unmasking the Dark Side. Today we are talking about a little-known entity, a shadowy, subterranean group of unknown individuals who are all linked through the conspiracy, the elusive spine and infrastructure to this snake, the connecting tissue to all of it, I believe is pedophilia. In the video Signature of Evil, I start to talk about this topic, but today we're going to talk about what I call the Ninth Circle. The Ninth Circle is almost a mythical organization of loosely connected pedophile child trafficking rings associated with the Illuminati in the United States and in the United Kingdom as well as Canada and Australia and throughout the globe. These are a group of connected pedophiles who have some sick things in common. They protect each other and they are, because they are a part of the Illuminati, they are protected by the Illuminati. It's called the Ninth Circle for a reason. In Dante's Infernal, Inferno, the lowest level of hell reserved for the most evil people are, is in fact the Ninth Circle of Hell. So this must be where child molesters and child killers are sent to, the darkest center, deepest hole in hell, the Ninth Circle. So... This goes all the way up to the very highest levels of royalty. In fact, there is a story with multiple eyewitnesses uh, that refer to a day in Canada where Queen Elizabeth and uh, her husband came to visit an orphanage in Canada <clears throat> on October 10th, 1982. Now, when you look at that date, the date alone is worth a do 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 because it's a 10 and a 10 for October 10th. 1982 is also 10 and 10 when you add 19 together. 1 and 9, you get 10. When you add 82 together, 8 and 2, you get 10. So essentially, numerically, that's 10, 10, 10, 10. And then while there, Queen Elizabeth meets some 10-year-old girls that she takes a fancy to and takes with her when she leaves. So she leaves the orphanage that she visited on 10-10-1982 or 10-10-10-10. She takes 10 10-year-old girls. Okay, there's got to be, there's just got to be some Satanism somewhere in that numerical sequence. I mean, that's just got to be uh, ritualistic. It's got to be religious. Uh, it's got to be demonic. So, the queen is, you know, purported to just go pick out some from these orphanages in her kingdom when she wants to, which leads us to a place called the Elm Guest House in southwest London. Uh, this is from a time period of 1977 to 1982 where this uh, brothel, this sex trafficking of young boys uh, starts to appear at this place called the Elm Guest House. And it's kind of a brothel for child trafficking to the rich and famous of England. And it's, uh, it gets started as a reoccurring gay party called the Kings and Queens Party, which kind of starts to deteriorate over some time into a pedophile ring. And uh, there's that going on, and there's another section that is like a TV studio where they are filming uh, porn, uh, pedophile porn, for the black market. And this is including, they believe, snuff films and death films involving young boys. And definitely torture films. That was what they did there. Um, so the source for this comes from an organization, the source for the boys. Where did they get the boys? They came from uh, NAPIC, National Association of Young People in Care, and specifically from an orphanage called the Grafton Orphanage. And this is where the boys were provided uh, to the uh, Elm Guest House and its uh, rich and famous clientele in, in London. So it was, this uh, orphanage was actually under the control of two men who were both pedophiles and in it together. And um, they started by making their own child porn and they uh, ended up uh, being, you know, renting the children out to the Elm Guest House. And uh, the guest list for the Elm Guest House uh, was a who's who of political 
and entertainment and um, even uh, governmental uh, personalities that some of the, the highest ranking people in England were making appearances regularly at this uh, child trafficking site in the late 1970s and early 80s. Um, more than half of the clientele when uh, it was finally all found out, uh, half the clientele was MI5 spies and um, more than half of the clientele were parliamentary members, rather, and a bunch of them were also MI5 spies that were there as well. This is just kind of a government and uh, po political and entertainment mecca. There was just people from all over the place, and it probably would have kept running, but they shut it down because one of the spies who was going there to engage in this behavior was found out to be a double agent, and they were afraid that he was collecting information. So the whole thing was shut down. And it was, in fact, delisted, which means you couldn't even uh, talk about it or write articles about it. And finding information on this story in particular is very difficult. And uh, it's been very suppressed down through time. But it was an open secret that this was going on right in the heart of London. Which leads us to another UK character. Another part of this cabal of pedophilia, this uh, circle this ninth circle cult is Jimmy Savile. Jimmy Savile actually got away with it. This guy lived his whole life, lived to be in his 80s. Um, everyone knew what he was doing. Everyone was afraid of him. They didn't, no one wanted to be the guy that tried to blow the whistle. There were some accusations, but most of the time they were all covered up. People were bought off. And Jimmy Savile lived a life of a celebrity. And nobody really in the rank and file had any idea at all that he was a rapist, a sadist, a pedophile, and eventually a murderer. But he was a DJ, uh, one of the first rock and roll DJs in England. And uh, he had a show, the Top of the, uh, Top of the Pops. And where he, you know, big stars would come on and, and he would give them their big breaks. And, um, you know, in the beginning, Savile, you know, would cover up his tracks by paying people off. But later on, he would get uh, so good at grooming these children and so openly able to get away with this behavior that he was starting to provide children for the, uh, for the circle. And um, the pedophiles in this ring take care of each other so there's a lot of bartering that goes on and it's not as much money passes hands as human trafficking where they're actually trading people like you would trade I don't know uh, baseball cards that's that's really all these people are uh, to those to these rich and famous elitists um, but he also covered his actions. You know, he was a, a beloved character. He gave away a lot of money. He raised money for uh, for many, many charities, many children's charities. Uh, he was kind of B the BBC's version of Dick Clark or Ryan Seacrest. Um, but, you know, he said things that made you wonder. One time he was quoted openly as saying, I think all children should be eaten at birth. Now, people thought he was joking, but was he? Um... But he covered his actions by being a tireless fundraiser for, fundraiser for hospitals and children's homes. And oftentimes he was so uh, valuable to these people that ran these homes financially that they would give him an office, many times with a bedroom or a shower attached, right there in the children's hospital or right there in the orphanage. And then he was it made it real easy for him to just parade them in there and nobody suspected a thing because, you know, he was this rich famous star who gave them all of this money why would he do that he raised over 40 million dollars uh, pounds rather for various causes just to gain access to his victims um, and he uses fundraiser uh, his uh, reputation as a fundraiser and donor um, to go by uh, anytime he wanted to he, he could pull up in front of one of these orphanages in his Rolls Royce and walk inside and go hey I'll take that girl that girl and that girl and let's all go for a ride in my Rolls Royce and he would take them on a ride for in his Rolls Royce rape them and bring them back and they would be quiet because the rich nice man gave him money and candy this is some sick stuff this is some sick stuff we're gonna we're we are in fact unmasking the dark side and it's going to get ugly and it's, it's going to continue to get ugly and I, I'm going to stop apologizing because it is what it is. These people are disgusting. Um, so, though with girls 
uh, Savile was a little more open, but the, his behavior with boys tended to be uh, more secretive because he didn't want anybody talking and he didn't want to leave any witnesses. So most of the time, his encounters with boys uh, went on on his yacht and he would take these boys out for what he uh, called uh, their last boat ride. Because when those boys went out on that boat and he was done with them, they didn't come back. This guy got away with it. There are over 450 surviving victims have come forward to share their accounts of the horrific sexual abuse, sadism, and torture that they experienced and suffered at the hands of Jimmy Savile. Abuses that spanned 50 years. He was knighted by the Queen. He was a frequent guest of Margaret Thatcher at 10 Downing Street. And he was a member of the Illuminati and their pedophile cult, the Ninth Circle. We had an Amer American version of this kind of billionaire, uh, Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein's Island, the Lolita Express, unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably heard of this story. And, you know, Jeffrey Epstein was a hedge fund manager. <clears throat> but what you may not know is that he was deeply involved with the Illuminati. He was a member of the Trilateral Commission and the Council on Foreign Relations, and I believe he was a member of the Ninth Circle Pedo Ring. Those three things combined will, will make you untouchable. He had a best friend and business partner, a man named Steve Hoffenberg, who was the owner of the New York Post. Steve Hoffenberg owned a company called Towers Financial Corporation, and it turned out to be the center where uh, Hoffenberg uh, and he got uh, Epstein involved in this. It was known as the world's largest Ponzi scheme. This is the largest Ponzi scheme in history. And Hoffenberg and Epstein are at the core of this scandal. Hoffenberg is tried and convicted and sentenced to 20 years. But Epstein walks away. He just walks away. He was involved too, but he just walks away. How does that happen? Well, because of Epstein's occultic, Masonic, and pedo connections, it, it, is, it allowed him to amass a large amount of money. And most of this money is coming out of this Ponzi scheme. So he, he guts this Ponzi scheme. He takes all of the money and he throws Hoffenberg to the wolves and walks away clean. Wow. <sighs> so he makes enough money to purchase his own personal island. And so he buys the, uh, an island known as Little St. James. Later on, it would be known as Orgy Island. And it is actually the largest single purchase of real estate ever in the Virgin Islands. He also bought an airplane, a Boeing 727, to carry him and his buddies back and forth to a place that would be uh, known for child sex trafficking on an airplane known as the Lolita Express. The Lolita Express had a lot of famous passengers in one flight alone. The flight logs indicate that Bill Clinton, former President of the United States, famous comedian Chris Tucker, and uh, actor Kevin Spacey were all on a single flight. All of these guys on one flight. And there's a lot of famous people attached to this island and this airplane. But... Everything started to kind of unravel for him in 2006 when he becomes the focus of an investigation out of Palm Beach, Florida. And he's, he comes under pedo charges there. And he's tied to a modeling agency. That's how he gets his kids. It's from a modeling agency. They send him out, these young kids looking for jobs as a model. And they come out and he grooms them uh, through massage. He gets them to massage him. And he grooms these children into sex slaves. A lot of this grooming, a lot of this mental manipulation at this point starts to resemble the Nexium sex cult. That this is a method of operation for the Ninth Circle pedo ring. That these individuals uh, are creating machinery and infrastructure that is grooming child sex slaves for the general public. Uh, for the elite, not the general public, I guess, the, the, uh, the elites of the globe, uh, from the royal family to the famous, uh, to famous actors and politicians. The names associated with Epstein are immense and unreal and hard to believe, honestly, with names like Bill Clinton, Chris Tucker, and Kevin Spacey flying around. 
Now, um, whenever whenever uh, they went to charge him, uh, he went ahead and he worked out a deal with the with the uh, prosecutors, and he did a plea deal. And this is really this plea deal is just it's unpre unprecedented leniency. There's something fishy about Epstein's plea deal in 2008. Uh, from the 2006 investigation, um, for one thing, he only does uh, he's only sentenced to 18 months. He's allowed to plea down to one count of uh, soliciting uh, prostitution, one count of soliciting, and an 18 month sentence. <clears throat> he only does 13 months. There's another number thing for you: 13 months. In, uh, in a special wing of the jail that's set aside just for him. He's on work release, so he spends up to 16 hours a day, six days a week at work, which has included him still being able to fly around on the Lolita Express to do business around the globe as long as he made it back at night. And many times he was gone for days with special uh, uh, permission, and it was all worked out. They just really, this guy didn't do any time. He slept at the county jail in his own special wing. So, and he was not even there all the time. And it's just, it's just a travesty. Really, you know, prison for one day a week for 13 months is not prison. Uh, I, ah, eh, sorry. <laughs> Whew, this is a hard series. Y'all, y'all pray for me. Okay, so. At the time of this legal crisis, he made numerous withdrawals from his Swiss bank accounts to cover payoffs to powerful people to ensure his leniency, which included, at this point, a $25,000 donation to Hillary Rodham Clinton. I said it again. Right in the middle of this, he donates twenty five grand to Hillary Rodden, Rodham Clinton. He's paying homage to the Queen of America. So... Uh, Epstein's entire staff was aware of his behavior, from his personal butler to his drivers to the people that worked at his many homes in uh, New York, in New Mexico, and in the Virgin Islands and abroad. He was surrounded by people and they were all aware of what was going on. And many of them that worked for him facilitated this, including his personal assistant who helped him procure and groom young girls. And um, more than 50 young women have come forward unmasking a child pedo procurement system under Epstein's sent, uh, control that commerced in child sex slaves for the rich and famous from around the world. Some of these girls were purchased from their parents. None of these accomplices can be prosecuted under the non-prosecution portion of the 2008 Florida plea deal. Let me say that again that not only did he get leniency, not only did he get only 13 months in part-time kind of jail, not only that, he got a guarantee that none of his accomplices could be prosecuted. None of them, none of the other Johns, none of the other people helping procuring them, none of the people on his plane, no one could be prosecuted that had anything to do with this pedo ring. If he would, that was one of the conditions, and they, had, they did that. They, they said, that they would not prosecute anyone else associated with this. So he's the only person that's going to see justice. It's unprecedented. It's dirty. It's corrupt to the core. The people involved in making this deal and taking this deal are just as guilty as he is. I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm beside myself. Uh, some of the famous people who are associated, who are either on the airplane or themselves on the island, or in some way directly related to this scandal, are some huge names. Bill Clinton, obviously, we talked about him. Bill Richardson, who was the New Mexico governor and a, uh, uh, a candidate for the presidency. Kevin Spacey, obviously. George Stephanopoulos, he was there. Courtney Love, the widow of um, oh the Nirvana guy. I did a video about him. Chris Tucker, the famous comedian, the former Prime Minister of Israel, Ehud Barak, who I have personally met. That's another video. I met Ehud Barak, and apparently he's in on this too, or at least associated with it. The only real... And then, there, then there's Prince Andrew. Don't want to leave out Prince Andrew of the royal family. He's named in this too. And he is, he is said, he's named to actually be one of the people uh, who, was, who was sexually abusing these children, as, long, as well as Alan Dershowitz, 
who is the only member of the left right now who is constitutionally defending Donald Trump against impeachment. And I find it interesting because Donald Trump's name is on this list too. Because one of these young girls worked at Mar-a-Lago and also Donald Trump is friends with this Epstein guy and has been seen around him. And there's even a quote that's supposed to be attributed to him that says he liked Jeffrey Epstein because they both had the same taste in girls. They liked him young. The Ninth Circle Pedo Ring is across the globe. It has also infiltrated the Catholic Church at the highest levels that this is also related to this Ninth Circle. People who have literally accepted their fate that they are ready to burn in hell just so that they can hurt these children and, and feed this evil spirit that possesses them. God help us all, but we are going to stop them. I hoped Donald Trump could stop them. I wonder now if he's been compromised because apparently what I'm hearing now is that uh, Epstein cut a deal for leniency and he has information potentially on the President of the United States, the current President of the United States, and that he is why Mueller is so smug because Mueller may end up bringing this into and this accusation into this. Do they have blackmail material on Donald Trump? Let's hope not. I hope Donald Trump is above all this. But you, one thing I know about this, don't trust anybody. Anyone can be involved in this. Anyone can be connected to this. Join me next time as we delve deeper into unmasking the dark side.